Now, a while back, I reviewed a Thunderbolt 4 docking station from a company called Acer. Uh, and in that video, I talked a little bit about my home setup. So I do have my personal PC and a work laptop, and I use all my devices like my display, all my USB peripherals like my keyboard, my mouse, audio system, all of them I use for both without having to unplug anything. So I use a KVM switch that I got off Amazon uh, from a company called TestSmart and for the most part it worked well and you know it, it said what it would do in the box. However, after using it for a long time, I think almost after a year, it has started to give me a few issues and there were some limitations that made me think that you know what, hey, I think I need to upgrade to something better. So I checked on Amazon again and honestly for the most part all the docking stations there or KVM switches there sort of do the same thing. I didn't really see anything that stood out but with the magic of social media and you know with me searching one thing suddenly I get ads about KVM switches everywhere on all my social media. I did see an ad on Facebook from a company called AV Access. So AV Access actually has a really cool line of KVM switches uh, and it's called their iDoc series. So yes, they do have a few, but the one that I picked was the iDoc D23 KVM switch. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I bought this particular one. Now, first up in the box, you do get the KVM switcher. You get a whole bunch of different cables. Uh, and honestly, the nice thing I like about this is that they actually give you everything you need. You don't really need to buy any other peripherals or cables unless the cables that they give you aren't long enough. All the video connections on this are DisplayPort, specifically DisplayPort 2.0. So if you know if these cables aren't long enough and you need to buy longer ones, just make sure they are uh, DisplayPort 2.0 compliant. Now talking about the build quality, no complaints, I think it feels really good. It has excellent build quality. The entire body on the outside of it is all like metal. I think it's aluminium uh, and I think it serves a practical purpose as well because I think it helps to dissipate heat. I didn't really hear a fan that was built in. Now the design of this did actually solve one issue that I had with my old Tesla KVM switch. Uh, and it was really slim, which was nice, but it was really long and took up a lot of space on my desk. This one is a little fatter. It's a little taller, but it's a lot uh, shorter as well. It's not as long and I think that's perfect for my setup. It gives me a lot more space on my desk now that I can even have an extra uh, power strip there. Really nice. So this is not going to be a guide on what to plug in. It is pretty straightforward but what I would say is if you're not familiar or this is the first time you're doing it, uh, just read through the entire guide. It is very detailed and very well thought out I would say for a guide. Uh, so well done AV Access. So in terms of ports, like I mentioned, all the video ports are DisplayPort 2.0. You also get uh, about three USB-A 3.0 ports, two at the front, one at the back, all of this have a bandwidth of about five gigabits per second. Now you also get two USB-A ports just at the bottom of the dock and it's actually USB 1.1. Now this is specifically for your keyboard and mouse. Now this actually has a really nice feature uh, where you can actually toggle between the two computers with your keyboard regardless of what keyboard you have. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that feature later on. Now you also do get an SD card reader, which I absolutely love. That is a dream send for me. That's another thing that I really like. Uh, and it also has an audio combo jack at the front. So that's both microphone and speaker right at the front. Now, like I said, I love the design as well. I will say though that I'm not a fan of having like two USB-A ports in the front, uh, along with your keyboard uh, USB-A ports at the front as well. I can understand having the USB 3.0 port to the front or at least having one in front because you know you want to plug in your flash drives or hard drives or any other USB peripherals temporarily. So that's that's I can understand that. However, the keyboard and mouse, you are not going to be changing that a lot. I wouldn't I would I wouldn't think so. So I would have preferred those USB A ports to be at the back because now with all the cables, including the audio cable on my dock, that's all plugged at the front. It's a little bit of an eyesore. And if you're one of those that is really particular about making your desk look really minimalistic and hiding all your cables, you're not going to like this one. However, for me, it's not a deal breaker. I don't really care too much. Uh, and it's really, like I said, it's really important to have, you know, some USB A ports or at least have one in front. Like, for example, if you needed to transfer some files from one PC to the other, you can actually plug in your hard drive to the front, go to one PC, copy everything to the hard drive, and then just switch to the other PC and then transfer it over. You don't have to plug and unplug your hard drive. That's really nice. However, there's one thing you need to take note of, and I made this mistake twice. Now, it doesn't uh, make the hard drive detectable to both simultaneously. 
all right? So if let's say you go to PC1, you plug in your hard drive and you're copying stuff over, do not switch to the other PC. If you do, it'll cut the connection to the hard drive and connect it to the other PC, all right? Like I said, I made this mistake twice. And it's not just one USB-A port. Most of the ports are like that. They are only detectable to that one PC that it is assigned to. Now, having said that, it does have a LAN port at the back. So it has an RG45 or Ethernet port at the back, and that supplies Ethernet or internet to both PCs at the same time. So that's the only one that sends to both. And that is fantastic because that was a little concern of mine. Like, do I switch? Am I gonna lose internet connection? No, you're gonna get it on both. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, before I mention that I specifically picked the iDoc D23, not that it was perfect for me, but it had the best features out of what I was looking for. Now, first of all, my old KVM switch only had a single USB port for peripherals, which was ridiculous. I don't know why it was only one and it was USB 2.0. So yeah, and I worked today for a while, but enough was enough. I needed more USB ports with a better bandwidth and speed. The other important thing was that, you know, I need to plug in both a PC and a laptop. And you might be wondering, there is the iDoc C20 that is specifically for one laptop and one PC. So that means that, you know, it connects to the PC via your video cables plus a USB cable to the PC, you know, to send over the USB peripherals. And then the other one is just a single USB-C, really nice. However, for me, there are a few problems with that. So first of all, my work laptop supports Thunderbolt 4 and I kind of need it to send, you know, my laptop screens to two 4K screens. So uh, I was still going to use my Thunderbolt 4 docking station regardless. So I decided not to get the C20, but not just that, because the, the C20 and the C10 as well only support dual screens. This iDoc D23 supports up to three screens, all right? Up to 8K at 60 Hz, that's insane. And for you gamers out there, at 4K, it does support high refresh rates up to 165 Hz, so you don't have to worry about losing any refresh rates if you connect the KVM switch. And yes, as you can see, I only have two monitors right now, but I do intend to upgrade in the future. So it would be nice if I bought a KVM switch that was sort of future-proof to an extent. And also right now it's a PC and a docking station, but in the future, if I happen to get two PCs, then I'm stuck with that one USB-C. So I think for me, the iDoc D23 was the best option. Now I did mention that you can actually switch between PCs on your keyboard, regardless of what PC that you have, you actually have three ways to do it. So first option is a button on the iDoc D23 itself. It's just there, you can press that, and then it will switch between your two PCs. Now, if you prefer to have it out of sight, which I don't know why you would, because you would want access to your USB ports, but for whatever reason, that button was out of reach for you, you do have two options. The first option is you can actually buy an accessory, which you plug into the back, and then you get this little disc that you can press, and then it will switch between the two PCs. So when I saw it, I actually thought that might be good for me to have, so I bought it, uh, but then later, on when I actually bothered to read through the manual and read through all the details, I realized that I actually didn't need to. Which brings me to my third option. You can actually switch between your two PCs just on your keyboard. It's really great. It has this hotkey feature that I don't think I've seen on any other KVM switch. So I think you can sort of customize it how you want, but the default option is to hold tab, press one to go to PC one, tap two to go to PC two, that easy. So you might be wondering if they have that option on the keyboard, why on earth would you bother selling this other button to switch between PCs? Now, if you're a gamer, and like I said, this dock has gamers in mind because of the high refresh rate, you might have certain macros and hotkeys already assigned to your keyboard and tab one or tab two might be used for something in the game. So you really, really don't want to play a game and then accidentally switch to another PC. So is there anything I don't like about the iDoc D23? Um, honestly, almost everything is absolutely perfect. I love the way it looks, the way it's built. It's really, really nice, feels really premium. Having said that, like I said, I would prefer to have the keyboard and mouse USB ports at the back so they don't have to be in front. Even the audio combo jack, I'm, I'm not a fan. It would be nice if they had two options, one at the front and one at the back, which didn't have to work simultaneously, but work depending on which one's plugged in. I don't like the, the, the fact that there are so many ports in the front, you know, so once I have everything plugged in, it's a little bit of an eyesore. And the other thing was, this is the only KVM switch in their line, and actually in, it's the only one in most KVM switches I searched for that didn't have 
EDID or EDID for short. So if you're not familiar with EDID, it stands for Extended Display Identification Data. It's sort of an emulator. So when you plug in two PCs, it sort of has them both connected to a emulated display at the same time, even though you're not using it. So it has a few benefits and I'm not too knowledgeable about that. But the one thing that's important in a KVM switch is that it helps to switch between the two PCs a little bit quicker. And honestly, it was kind of obvious that it didn't have it. Now on my old KVM switch, you know, when I just press the button to switch from one PC to the other, it does take a little bit of time, but it is quite seamless. However, for the iDoc D23, it takes a little bit longer and the whole transition is a little weird. Like when I switch from one PC to the other, it goes really small in one quarter of the screen and then it goes out and everything sort of needs to adjust the scale. So I could be wrong about this and if anyone knows more about this than me, please do feel free to correct me. But I think the reason why that switch is a little slow and a little bit weird is because it doesn't have EDID. My guess would be because this is the only one that supports 8K, so it could be that resolution that causes an issue and maybe that's why it doesn't work with EDID. It could be. Is it a deal breaker? Not by any means, not, not for me at least. So I have to say, well done AVXS. I think the iDoc D23 might just be the best you know, KVM switch on the market today, let alone the, the best bang for buck. I think it's fantastic. It's built really well, design is great. I do have some minor things that I don't quite like about it, but honestly, with what else is there on the market today, I think this is still the best. So it is gonna get a four out of five stars and of course our Technobabble recommended logo. All right, so that about wraps up my review of the AVXS iDoc D23. Now, if you like this video, you know what to do and I would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications on our next video. I'm JP and I'll see you real soon.